untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today I'm taking a look at an Asper Planeswalker Super Friends deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon featuring three copies of Luxior Jada's Gift, a one mana legendary artifact equipment that can equip Planeswalkers for just one mana and then it will turn those Planeswalkers into creatures but there are still Planeswalkers that can activate their loyalty abilities and they will be creatures with power and toughness equal to the number of counters on them so that's going to be loyalty counters for the most part but we have some other counters throughout the deck with the Wandering Emperor adding plus one counters which will add on to Janna's Gift as well as Elspeth Resplendent both adding plus one counters and various ability counters and even Kaya adding ghost form counters will also protect our Planeswalker creatures from removal as we'll be able to pick them back up in our hand if they get removed and will also increase power and toughness. So one of the main advantages of turning our Planeswalkers into creatures, besides being able to attack with them to deal damage, is that the opponent can no longer attack our Planeswalkers with creatures to decrease their loyalty. So against creature decks that makes it much easier to reach an ultimate on a Planeswalker to take over the game that way. And of course we'll also offer a nice blocker in the meantime if we're not attacking with it. And Jada's Gift can also maybe turn around some control matchups where we can sometimes struggle to deal with opposing Planeswalkers as we don't have a ton of creatures to apply pressure with. Now all of a sudden we can turn one of our Planeswalkers into a creature and take over the game that way. So a very unique card that can lead to some very interesting scenarios. And then all the Planeswalkers in our deck include Kaito, which can maybe draw extra cards and help us loot through the deck, and can also make unblockable ninja tokens to enable that plus one ability. We can also rely on the Wandering Emperor as removal with a minus two, can add plus one counters to our Planeswalkers even once we turn them into creatures, and then the Samurai tokens can also come in handy. Soren provides card advantage, and the minus seven ultimate is now also very achievable thanks to Janna's Gift to just end the game, can maybe attack with a seven powered Soren, and then minus minus seven to win the game on the spot. And then a Teferi who slows the sunset can help us generate more mana by untapping our lands and even the Celestas as a nice ramp artifact that can also provide a bit of card selection and additional life and can also of course minus two to provide a bit of card advantage and can even untap our creature planeswalkers or tap down opposing creatures to allow our planeswalkers to attack. And then at 5 mana, 2 copies of Elspeth, especially synergistic with Janna's Gift with that plus 1 ability, can also minus 3, maybe find one of our cheaper planeswalkers or creatures in the process, and even finding a creature land, and then putting a shield counter on it, and then various ability counters, can also be very synergistic, and we've got one of each of the creature lands with Cave, Hall, and Hive of the Eye Tyrant. And then we also have two copies of Spider Queen making spider tokens, can draw additional cards as well. And Kaya, as we mentioned, with that ghost form counter, very nice with our Spirited Companion, an early creature to draw a card, can maybe chum block to protect our planeswalkers, or can enable Kaito to draw without having to discard. And then a minus three, another nice removal ability. The ultimate, also achievable thanks to Janna's Gift, will also take over, allowing us to replay our planeswalkers from the graveyard over and over again. Then we've got a few sweepers in the form of Doomscar, which can be foretold early, and Farewell at 6 mana, especially effective in a Planeswalker deck, as it can exile everything else. And then four copies of Vanishing Verse as our spot removal spell of choice. And then a mana base, as we mentioned, one of each creature land, one of each basic. And then a ton of dual lands to make sure we can cast our spells in a timely manner. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, we've got a keepable hand. We'll have to decide if we want to play Hall and give up on an early Vanishing Verse. For now we can play Beach. Put on Blue-Red. Alright, so I don't think we're in a hurry to Vanishing Verse. Play that tapped. Get more tap lands out of the way. Opponent with Outburst making a treasure. Magma Opus now as well. So this could very well be a Bombardment deck. Goldspan Dragon instead. Still probably worth exiling here. Opponent bouncing their own dragon back. Okay, so don't have a whole lot going on. Probably gonna cycle this tower as we have plenty of lands already. Opponent missing a land to play dragon. And 
And now Spider Queen's probably the best play. In case they can play Dragon next turn. Opponent counters it. Still a Vanishing Verse available now. While their opponent will get some treasures in return. So probably exile it now. And then next turn play Elspeth. Could minus just to maybe find a land. Pop quiz in response. That's fine. Sciences finds another mountain, presumably. Nope, still going for Island. And they had a tapped Spikefield Hazard, fair enough. Okay, can go for a Sorin now to start drawing extra cards. Elspeth wouldn't be doing a whole lot unless we decide to minus. Although we're not that likely to hit something relevant. So I think I prefer Sorin. And then we'll plus. And I'll reveal Kaito, which we can play out as well here. So that works out. Short disruption to counter. That's too bad. But we can keep plussing Sorin. Reveal planes. Play Elspeth. Could also start attacking with our hall if we really want. For now I'll minus and then next turn we can maybe plus on the hall. Celestis is a nice find, and so is Cave of the Frost Dragon. I think I prefer Celestis. Can help us loot here. And in fact, I could activate it right now. Even though we're gonna go shields down. And discard the land. Alright, so next turn, activate Hall, and maybe put a, a lifelink counter on it. Spider Queen's not bad either. So we have a couple options. Probably start by plussing Sorin still. Reveal a land. And then... Yeah, if we animate Hall, our opponent might have a bounce spell, but they won't be able to pay for Ward. So this seems relatively safe. And then we'll start gaining some life. Maybe give it flying next time. Vigilance also useful, so we can still tap it for mana after attacking, but not super relevant right now. Unless we wanted to activate Celestis again. So now we're at 22, with a Sorin about to ultimate next turn, so our opponent forced to use a Dragon's Fire, revealing another gold span, so they can finish off one of my two Planeswalkers. Sorin down. Still have Elspeth plus Hall. As a neat combo. And a Kaya now as well. Okay, so Kaya could exile Dragon. And then maybe we can make a Vigilant Hall. So we can still play Kaya. Let's do this together. The treasure could have potentially let them play an interactive spell, but they didn't. Opponent with another disruption that they were holding out on. Fair enough. Well, opponent is still at 5, facing a hall with all sorts of abilities, and we still have a pretty stacked hand. So, if we expect interaction, we're probably better off developing some planeswalkers here. And that will also switch it back to daytime. Play Elspeth. Can pay for disruption now. And then we could minus or we could plus. Maybe giving one of the spiders an extra ability, although not that useful in the face of Goldspan. So maybe I'll just minus. 
and find a spirited companion. And a doom scar could come in handy as well. Okay, so do I foretell that? Sure. And then we'll discard pathway to Celestis. Opponent must have something like a bounce spell here for Hall, otherwise the attack with Goldspan was a little too risky. Although then again they might have been forced to chump block with Goldspan instead. So they don't necessarily need to have removal. But a Magma Opus will certainly do. Killing both my Planeswalkers. And there's the equipment at long last once our Planeswalkers are all dead. Oh well, we'll see how this pans out. Draconic Intervention to wipe the board. Yep. And another Behold the Multiverse. So we can Doomscar and then still attack with Hall. And our opponent better have some interaction here with those treasures. But once Goldspan is gone, those treasures also generate a lot less mana. But they could still have like a uh, one mana bounce spell and then pay the ward. So we'll start here. And it's going to be a big score in response. That's mana neutral with a gold span, discarding another Jory Disruption. Opponents looking at our Hall of the Storm Giants. Could be another Magma Opus. But now at least our opponent will also lose their token. We'll uh, tap this for mana. Opponent loses their two elementals. And then we can play Kaito. And then we might want a plus. Just to get more loyalty to maybe use Jada's gift as a finisher. And uh, we've got a backup. Don't necessarily need to play it right now. But we could. And then Kaito will phase out and next turn still be equipped to the equipment and then can present lethal by himself. And then we have Hall and Kaito that can both attack. Celestis triggers, might as well. The fairy's gone. And uh, yeah, we can start by plussing. Discard land. Activate Hall, and our opponent will need two interactive spells or another Magma Opus here. And yep, they've got another one. Yeah, I guess we'll just let that happen. Float some mana. And then activate Celestis, I suppose. Hang on to Kaya, pass it back, since I don't really want to trade Kaito for the elemental. Opponent's got a center class him anyway. And then might as well activate again. Companion's gone. Well, opponent's gone through three copies of Magma Opus, no, even four, so they don't have any left. Scholar of Frosts and their own hall. Okay, so I can play Kaya, exile the elemental, still activate hall, and hopefully that does it. Bones got a negate instead. And then there's probably no point in trying to equip Janna's gift, even though it would add a few more power and toughness to the hall as it increases with counters. Bone forced to chump. And we'll hang on to the pathway to discard to Celestis. Prismari command to loot. So now our opponents at the very least can chump with our own hall. You need to slow down. Let's talk. Another Jada's gift. So I can 
equip Janda's gift if we think we need a little bit more power and toughness. If they maybe try and combine blocking with Hall and casting a burn spell, which could be possible. As opposed to trying to activate Celestus. So 13 13 Hall goes face. And happy to see the opponent jump here. It's going to be a big score discarding Goldspan, which was apparently not good enough. And then I could still activate Celestus if I'd like. If I play my land, discard another Jada's gift, which is fine. And a sword is nice. Okay. Celestus triggers again, might as well. Don't think we need to hang on to farewell. And interestingly, Hall staying a creature here. You need to sit this one out. Well, I guess it says creature in addition to its other types. So that's actually a pretty weird interaction. Dragon's Fire to deal 3, another Dragon's Fire to deal 3, and the Cinder Clasm will finish it off. Okay, well, unexpected side effect of equipping Janos Gift on creature lands, they stay creatures in the opponent's turn. So not really what I wanted, but I guess it made for an interesting interaction. So we can play Sorin, draw, or make a vampire. The vampire itself, the opponent can easily shrink down. So it doesn't accomplish a whole lot, so maybe I'm better off plussing so Sorin can be equipped with Janna's Gift and potentially deal lethal. And then I'll wait to equip until next turn. Right. A reveal can easily pay 3. And then activate Celestis. Discarding another copy, most likely. Or I can hang on to a second copy since they do play Prismari Command. So I won't be equipping Janna's Gift. We'll wait until next turn so we can dodge Sorcery Speed Removal. Will's gonna sacrifice himself to draw two. But yeah, opponent is out of Magma Opus. I've seen multiple copies of Goldspan hit the graveyard. There's one in Exile. Behold the Multiverse to draw. So now the main concern would be like a Bounce Spell, Bouncing Sorin. Or more burn spells to take him out. Alright, Creative Outburst will deal 5, that does it. Opponent's down to 12 cards in library, we're at 18. Celestus, guess we'll discard like a pathway. Can cycle a Rafine's Tower, Hive is not bad. Uh, start by cycling. Doomscar, not that useful. Play that, activate Celestis. Although it's going to switch to Knights by itself. So, do I bother foretelling Doomscar? Sure. Pass it back. And Celestis can go, we'll cycle Rafine's Tower. So... Both decks about to run out of cards and library here. Goldspan hits us for 4. Don't know if the opponent can kill us in time at 50 plus life. So maybe I shouldn't be trying to draw more cards and just make the opponent deck themselves. Down to 9 cards and library. And we'll cycle. Okay, take a draw. Celestis triggers. Farewell could get rid of all artifacts, although also gets rid of Celestis and Janda's gift. So, I don't think we need farewell. Wandering Emperor's not bad. So we can Doomscar deal with Goldspan. Make them use a removal spell on Hive. 
opponent counters Doomscar. I guess we'll see if they have a response to... Let's see, can we activate Hive, play Wandering Emperor and play Spirited Companion? I think we'll be one mana short. So in that case, probably prioritize attack with Hive, make them use removal, then maybe flash in Wandering Emperor, finish off Goldspan. And don't think it matters what we get rid of, but sure, Magma Opus. Opponent takes three, down to two. And I think I should Wandering Emperor exile Goldspan. Can pay for disruption. Right, another sword coming. Okay. Well, our opponent's still facing a lethal hive. The lost his triggers. I think we're still fine to draw. And a cave seems excellent. Although I guess it doesn't get past Goldspan necessarily. Still good enough. Okay, well, let's attack and see if they've got more removal here. Get rid of another Magma Opus. And Soaring City to bounce, okay. We'll replay Hive then. And I didn't think I'm activating Celestus necessarily because it might come down to decking. Still have a few copies of Vanishing Verse in the deck for sure. Not too many Planeswalkers. Goldspan attacks. Into the Royal to bounce. Okay. So they can put Goldspan on defense. But still doesn't block Hive. So losses triggers. Do I want to draw? Sure. There's Vanishing Verse. And a farewell. So, yeah, we could hit all artifacts here. I think we just animate Hive, see what happens. Get rid of another Magma Opus. And a Prismari Command, dealing some damage. Okay. And a Spikefield Hazard to finish it off. Okay. Game keeps going. So do we want to farewell exile all graveyards as well so they can't loop anything back just in case? And then just deck the opponent at 44 life, plus we have a cave that can pressure them. It seems good enough actually. Alright, exile everything. And play a cave. Okay, animate cave. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what a marathon game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Companion has a nice early play to protect our planeswalkers. Up against what might be a life gain deck, so finding a sweeper at some point is going to be important. As they can quickly set up some very large creatures. Power of Heroes, also a good one, so maybe more of a Cleric Sacrifice deck. So Farewell in particular is going to be huge, as it can also exile artifacts and maybe the opponent's graveyard. So they cannot keep getting stuff back over and over. Opponent still missing black mana. Another veteran, and they can get a 2-drop here. And I guess with Pyre, even if they don't have black mana, they can still get some black creatures. Or opponent could just be mono-white. Voice of the Blasts picks up its first of many counters. Alright, Doomscar's nice. Could foretell it here. What does Kaito do for us? 
makes a ninja. Not that exciting. So I'll foretell Doom's car. I'm not going to show them double white mana yet to keep it a bit of a surprise. But we've got the pathway. All right, Spellbinder won't be able to take Doom's car now. And then, yeah, Doom's car, a bunch of planeswalkers to hopefully take over the game. It's going to be our plan. And I'll play a Janus Gift as well. Sorin and Kaito can both draw to help hit Orlando Drops, but actually playing red as well. Maybe for the Dwarf. The Fairy, currently not the best as we don't have a Celestus to untap. So I think Sorin. And then plus is going to be the play. Hope to hit a land. Another Janos gift, still definitely worth one life. Another Phantom before they sacrifice one to Pyre of Heroes to get a two drop. Probably not their Voice of the Blessed. Currently don't have a great answer to it. Right, never mind. Point on getting a Cleric of Life's Bond, so this. Definitely a Mardu Cleric's deck. Gonna keep plussing with Surin, I think, and then we could just equip Janda's Gift on it. So we can attack, and so the opponent cannot attack our Planeswalker anymore. And then we can play Kaito and draw as well. And Farewell will be useful. Now, a cool interaction with Farewell. If we exile artifacts and creatures, Janna's Gift will get exiled first, and then Surin will no longer be a creature by the time we exile all creatures. So it will get saved, and then we've got a backup Janna's Gift, so we don't really mind exiling our artifact. So if we can set that up next turn, that would be great. Another Voice of the Blessed. Opponent cannot attack any of our Planeswalkers. So an untapped land here would be great. There we go. So probably don't want to attack first, even if we plus opponent could double block, which is something we want to avoid. So we'll plus reveal Spider Queen at 13 life. Hmm, is that worth it? Maybe not. Still have plenty of card advantage here. I mean, I could attack. What are the chances that our opponent wants to double block? Pretty small, actually, as we can also flash in a Wandering Emperor, so yeah, that would not work out for them. And then we'll make the play I mentioned to also get rid of the opponent's Pyre of Heroes. Farewell, Exile Artifacts, Creatures, Enchantments and Graveyards. And Soren sticks around, and then now we can plus Kaito and just draw Spider Queen. And we've got another Janna's Gift ready to go. Bone found their black mana at long last. And there's Hoffrey, like we suspected. Don't have any amazing answers to Hoffrey, but we can apply quite a bit of pressure here. So play Janna's Gift, equip Sorin, which can plus an extra an ultimate as well. Can start by plussing. Reveal a land. And then... Blood for knowledge. Play an equip Janna's Gift, and we can still flash in Wandering Emperor, which will also add on to the pressure. And I think we may even want to flash an Emperor now, as it would add a plus one counter, which gets essentially doubled by Janna's Gift. Although then again, we can also keep it as an answer to Hoffrey. And if we get to ultimate Sorin, our opponent's dead anyway. Plus Kaito. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll pass. Could have also maybe played Teferi and a Spirited Companion after untapping a land. But kind of like the end of turn Wandering Emperor. Right, Vanishing Verse, sadly, getting rid of Sorin. 
that happens. Still have a Kaito that can deal quite a bit of damage here once we equip it. And Hoffrey's not going to attack because they know about Wandering Emperor. Still worth flashing in. And then do I make a Samurai? Or do we just plus? Kind of like plusing here. Okay, so we can turn on Kaito with Jada's gifts. Opponent's just going to jump with a Lunark Veteran as a problem. Unless we want to tap it down with Teferi, forcing them to jump with Hoffrey. So that could work. So that can plus. And then tap Veteran. Untap a land. Equip Jada's Gifts to Kaito. And then we can plus with Wandering Emperor. And then I could plus Kaito first to make that lethal. Discard land. And attack. Hoffrey forced to jump Kaito. That's not something I expected to be saying. And we can add a sword into the board, why not? And that can plus. And do we want to reveal Elspeth? Sure. Now our opponent doesn't have a very threatening board. Elspeth also very synergistic with Janna's gift. That's no coincidence. There's a Skyclave Hierophant, opponent empty-handed. But uh, their graveyard also pretty empty after that farewell, which is pretty brutal for the Mardu Clerics deck. And your opponent concedes, next turn Elspeth can give Kaito flying, we can put more counters on it with Wandering Emperor, and that's probably game. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand missing white mana, I don't think we can keep. This is better. And then what do we like? It's between Elspeth and Kaya. On what to bottom. And uh, Elspeth is pretty nice with the Samurais from Emperor. But Kaya does offer additional removal, which is probably preferred. Jada's Gift, okay. So we may get to see it in action alongside Kaya putting ghost form counters on our Planeswalkers. Opponent on a Naya deck with Magda, that's gonna get removed before they get to untap. And then next turn, Celestus plus Jada's Gift, nice and efficient. Briefcase, opponent serious about treasures. Okay. Table of the Mirror Breaker is a good one. If I draw an untapped land, do I Doomscar? Picked up a Teferi instead. So Teferi still lets us untap Celestis and land to foretell Doomscar at least. Yeah, or we could equip Jada's Gift on it, but then Doomscar is going to be a little awkward. Although it would present a blocker for the Goblin Shaman. And then maybe we don't need Doomscar. Yeah, I could see that too. And equip Jada's Gifts. Nice 5-5. Five five. Can block the Goblin Shaman. And next turn we can start powering it up with Wandering Emperor. Which will add a ton of power and toughness between the plus one counter also counting for Jada's Gift. And yeah, Naya might struggle to get rid of a 5-5 five five here. Ooh, Buseju to get rid of Jada's Gift. That's too bad. Still ramps us. And we'll get a nice tri-land. Alright, that's too bad. Would have liked to see that Jada's Gift in action, but... Yeah, a lot of decks have access to artifact removal nowadays in the main deck. We'll loot, and then a land can probably go. If I untap Celestus and a land with Teferi, does that open up any new possibilities if I keep the land? I could Doomscar, 
Still not to really do anything else, so sure, we'll discard. Now I could also wait on Doomscar until opponent transforms Fable. And then for now maybe just get rid of Goblin Shaman. But then we would lose Wandering Emperor, so maybe it's just Kaya Exile Shaman. And then Kaya survives the Citizen. And hope there's no haste creatures to worry about. Yeah, I guess I could buy that. And then do we foretell Doomscar? I probably should, just to be efficient. Opponent might not necessarily suspect a Doomscar since we didn't cast it this turn. But we'll see. Kaya falls to one. And Asika's Chariot? Okay, that's not too bad. So we can wipe the board. And then Emperor can deal with Chariot, maybe. So we'll Doomscar first. The fairy can keep plussing. Or we can go for Sorin to draw. So Kaya doesn't really plus on anything. Fairy pluses. And then I think we hang on to Wandering Emperor to maybe exile Chariot if they manage to crew it. Although it's not a guarantee with only 3, maybe 4 mana. It's mainly if they have a backup chariot. Alright, Jet Mirror also works. Also neat interaction, Teferi can tap down opposing creatures so Wandering Emperor can exile them. We'll save Teferi. Farewell's nice too. Okay. So, step one, maybe Sorin and make a vampire so we can start loading counters onto it with Wandering Emperor. Consider yourself Still doesn't block Jetmir profitably. Remember your training. Could also minus with the fairy, maybe should have started there. And a companion, okay, now we can double block Jetmir potentially. And then plusing Kaya on companion also works out much better. Celestus triggers, discard Celestus. Kaito, a nice pickup. So yeah, I'm liking my spot for active planeswalkers. Gotta find another Janus gift, which will also end the game pretty quickly. Especially with the extra synergies from Kaya putting Ghost Form counters and the Wandering Emperor. Opponent does have another Chariot. Chat Mirror 6 for Vigilance still doesn't really attack profitably. So your opponent passes. Okay. So Teferi can untap our Vampire after it attacks. Start by drawing with Sorin. And we can farewell at any point to get rid of Chariot and the creatures, but we'll see if we can delay that and extract more value out of our Planeswalkers first. Reveal Companion, which we can plus with uh, Kaya. On so plus on Vampire, that can attack. I have got new moves to teach you. The Ghost Form counters also work if we exile our own creatures with Farewell. Maybe start with Kaito. Five Planeswalkers in play. That can plus. Doomscar is not bad either. Play Companion. Plus on it with Kaya. And then Teferi gets to untap. Maybe after floating some mana. And then I could foretell Doomscar or keep up Vanishing Verse, maybe better. And pass it back. Okay. I think we'll be able to successfully protect all five Planeswalkers here. 
Wedding announcement's fine, we can exile that with Vanishing Verse before they draw. Although, Farewell also gets rid of it. Sentinel. Yeah, I think Farewell is going to be the end of the game. So I kind of want to not cast it so we can find Jada's Gift. If they crew chariot, I would much rather Vanishing Verse is that, so we don't have to exile our own Celestis. And then sure, they can maybe draw with Announcement if they attack with two creatures, but I don't think they will. So, sure, copy your cats. Vanishing Verse Chariot. And then Farewell wipes the entire board, keeping our Planeswalkers and our Celestis. So we'll start by drawing. Well, revealing farewell, I guess we'll probably end it. But uh, yeah, I can uh, attack with my vampire first. Castus, tapping Celestus. Exiling creatures, enchantments, graveyards, might as well. Get back our companions. Make some spirits in the process, and our opponent explodes as expected. Alright, sadly they had the Boseju for Janna's gift, but it also kind of set us up to ramp and take over with our planeswalkers, so they needed to have that answer. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Play Swamp, this on white, this can be blue. We'll need another white source for Wandering Emperor. Celestus will help. Up against a white deck of some variety. Red-white, turn to Aspirant. That's worth exiling. So probably the new red-white aggro deck that's taken off in popularity. But yeah, control game plan with a few sweepers can be quite effective against it. Even though haste creatures are also good against our planeswalkers. Another Vanishing Verse does not hit Cavalier, but we can main phase either Wandering Emperor or Kaya to exile it. And I guess Kaya is probably our best bet since it's more mana efficient. And then hope they don't have another Haste creature. If they have to use a burn spell to finish off Kaya, that's fine. Another Aspirant. Okay. And the play with Fire to finish off Kaya, but we've got a backup. Okay, that can go on white, and then if I just pass a turn, we flip it to knights, we get to loot, and then I can still flash an Emperor, play Vanishing Verse. So that seems okay, even though I don't really want to discard anything. Still better to loot, maybe get rid of some lands off the top. Could see a Raichu here. It's gonna be Adversary getting back a Burn Spell. Sure. So we can get rid of both creatures. And then still have a Kaya in hand. Possible they don't attack with Aspirants to save it from Wandering Emperor, but then we can just Vanishing Verse and Emperor takes care of the other one. So, Exile Aspirants, Exile Adversary, even though we could keep Vanishing Verse for Raichu, but we still have a Kaya as well. Discard land, and Soren's excellent, so you can maybe make a Vampire and then put a plus one counter on it. And yeah, opponent has seen enough, the new red-white aggro deck, very powerful but does struggle against your typical Sweepers plus Planeswalker control decks. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a keepable hand. Hall's gonna be a little awkward with Vanishing Verse, but uh, still acceptable. I right, can play this instead, and then decide if we need to keep up Verse next turn or not. Opponent, green-white. And Weaver, something we could exile. Although we could also Farewell at some point, which I imagine will be quite effective against an enchantment deck. And then for now maybe play Hall. 
And then curve Celestis into Soren, take it from there. Companion will draw two now with Weaver. So that's a neat trick. So, yeah, we need this Farewell to be very effective to reset the board. Hopefully the opponent doesn't have too many cards left in hand. But if they can keep chaining together companions, that's gonna be tough. Celestis could also get exiled by removal, so it's not guaranteed to stick around. Hallowed Haunting, we don't really mind seeing, as it's a slow card that still gets swept up by Farewell. So if I play Sorin and plus, it doesn't necessarily die to what's in play. And that sets up our Farewell beautifully. And nice to reveal a land. My ways are not for the weak. Probably should have uh, played Sorin before playing land that turn, in case we find another tapped creature land. A restoration happens. And they could again choose to activate Weaver. So next turn, probably have to pull the trigger on Farewell, get rid of creatures and enchantments, and then Soren can keep drawing extra cards. Opponent ignores Soren, goes face, so they might have some answer to Soren in hand. But that's fine. Land we can reveal. There is also Cave of the Frost Dragon to worry about eventually. So farewell, creatures, enchantments and graveyards might as well. Okay, so that resets the board. Go to Sorin on 6, loyalty. Vanishing Verse can deal with Cave. Or maybe another Hello Taunting if that shows up. Weaver instead. And a wedding announcement also pretty good. Well, we haven't drawn many non-land cards so far. Let's hope that changes. Well, more lands. Second pass, keep up Hall. And then we can uh, block any attackers that try and pressure Sorin. We'll also get to activate Celestis that way. And keep up Vanishing Verse. Luxior, okay. That could be pretty spicy. Maybe hit the opponent with Sorin before ultimating for the perfect 20 damage. I guess her opponent's at 22, but would still be pretty nifty. Another wedding announcement. So we may see them try and use Weaver to copy the announcement triggers. Although at this point I'm kind of liking maybe killing the Weaver so they don't get to draw two of announcements, but then again they would be running into Hall so they would lose the Weaver for free. So maybe it's fine if they attack. Alright. And then the Ward should protect Hall from any removal spells. But her opponent does get to refuel with announcements. So we'll see. Soren down to 6. Could still get a nice attack in. So we might see removal on Soren here with like a borrowed time. Nope, opponent just draws with announcements. Yeah, I think it's time for Jada's gift. And then Soren will plus. Finding a hive. So, play Janna's Gifts, attack. Hit them for a healthy 7. Don't expect too much instant speed removal, other than maybe another Boseju. Well, they actually had it. That's annoying. So, running two Bosejus. Okay, I guess we get a land and return now. When are we ever going to get to see our Janna's Gift in action is a question now. Probably play Hive and pass with Vanishing Verse up as opposed to activating Celestis. Or we can Vanishing Verse an announcement now, but then we don't have a clean answer to their cave. So maybe I want to wait for them to animate cave and kill that so they don't get to draw off announcement. But yeah, kind of need another 
copy of Farewell here to stabilize us. Hallowed Haunting also going to be a problem. And the Cami of Transients. So yeah, another Farewell would be perfect. The 1-1 one -one token could attack Soren. So our opponent's going to get to make a few more tokens end of turn. So I guess Doomscar is a reason to still maybe want to get rid of Hallowed Haunting or one of the announcements. But we might be all in on finding another Farewell. And then Soren sure could ultimate, but 13 damage doesn't necessarily win us the game. Could get rid of the token and then next turn animates Hall attack, but they can just jump with one of the many tokens that they'll get. So, yeah, I guess we'll let that happen. And I think I hang on to Vanishing Verse still. Opponent pumps their team. Celestis triggers Finding Teferi. Discard one of our many lands. And Kai to the draw. So, start by plussing Sorin. Find Spider Queen. Do we pay? Kind of need to find a sweeper here, which we currently don't have. So, we might just get killed if we take five, but I'm gonna try it. Can play Kaito to draw and see where we end up. Another Jada's Gift. That's interesting. Get rid of another land, hang on to Celestis in case they remove it. So you can play and equip Jada's Gifts. Can still play a Teferi as well to maybe gain some life. So let's see, play Teferi. Untap two things, play an equip, and then I can still play a land, so I'll still have Vanishing Verse up. Alright, so. I guess we don't have to play Teferi right now. Can do this first. Kaito will go Wind of Turn. Sorin attacks. Opponent takes it. Play Teferi, which can also untap Sorin. And that will keep up Vanishing Verse. Okay, so interesting turn coming up. Not sure where I'm pointing Vanishing Verse yet. Touch the Spirit Realm. Wants to try and get rid of Sorin, but we could exile it in response. Gets rid of Janus Gift instead. Still worth keeping that around. And then next turn we could ultimate Sorin to deal 13 and maybe still get an attack in with our Planeswalkers, we'll see. Another announcement. So we're not dead on board. The Fairy can tap some things, but it's probably not going to be enough to get a clean attack in. Bone gets to draw two end of turn. So they only have two blockers. The fairy can tap one, so we just need to find one more removal spell, or I guess just animate Hive as another menace creature. And then we can activate the fairy, untapping some things. Probably should have floated mana with uh, Celestis, but that's okay. Tap this, untap this. Attack, opponent will take at least three, and then Soren will finish them off. Wow, what a game. And yeah, Janus Gift put in a lot of work. Can still activate Kaito to draw. So we didn't need a second farewell after all. And I guess we'll draw first with Kaito, just to see what's next. Another Kaito and Sorin for 13 damage. Yeah, what a weird game with uh, Janna's Gift, but certainly a card that can lead to a lot of cool scenarios like we saw here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. 
early companion, Doomscar, to wipe the boards, and then some planeswalkers to take over. Kaito also nice if we get to attack with companion up against blue white. And Bankbuster, so it could also be a control deck here. Well, if we can resolve Kaito and draw two cards per turn, that's one way to kind of beat the control deck. Gordon passes, maybe planning to activate Bankbuster. Could play around Jory Disruption by just playing another companion, but since we have a backup Kaito, I think we forced the issue here. That resolves. The powerful won't help. I'll do it myself. Now Bankbuster is kind of tough for us to answer since it doesn't die to Doomscar or Vanishing Verse, but we can eventually maybe catch it with a farewell. Ravelry makes a couple tokens. Okay, so attack with Companion, draw with Kaito. Step one. Could have maybe played land first to represent Wandering Emperor. Alright, Jada's Gift is awesome too. So I wouldn't mind resolving that. So maybe go for Companion first. Celestus, the draw. Can foretell Doomscar. Or I can play and equip Jado's Gift, although I don't really want to expose Kaito to removal. Unless we can, you know, put a Ghost from Counter on it right away. So I think that just means foretell Doomscar and pass. And then wait on Jado's Gift until we find a maybe better window for it. So both decks just drawing a few cards here and there. And then the Ghost Form counters also help against Exile effects in case our opponent has a Wandering Emperor. Goes for a March, exiling our companions, that's pretty drastic. So now Jada's Gift also enables Kaito himself, which is pretty nifty. And the Fairy can help me play Jada's Gift as well. And we'll combo with Celestus. Can't quite play Celestus and Teferi this turn. But I'm kind of liking Teferi. Although we also have to watch out for Bankbuster, I suppose, which can potentially hit one of our Planeswalkers next turn. So maybe instead of Teferi, I should still go for Celestus plus Jada's Gifts. And then we'll be able to combine Teferi with Celestus next turn. So play Jada's Gifts, equip, and then we want to plus after attacking with Kaito. They could have another march to exile Jada's Gift, I suppose. And then by turning Kaito into a creature, they also won't be able to attack it with Bankbuster. Alright, sadly our opponent has a march. That's too bad. So now... Kaito might want to make a ninja, although now Bangbuster is no longer a concern. So I guess we'll still plus. Back up Kaya. Although Kaya a lot less exciting now that the uh, gift is gone. Alright, um... Probably can get rid of a land. Even though hitting our land drops is important, now Teferi plus Celestis generates a lot of mana. So next turn I could maybe go Teferi plus Kaya. Okay, Legion Angel Crewing Bankbuster is not something I expected, so that can take out Kaito. The one of Legion Angel, presumably. That changes the texture of the game drastically. Can still play Teferi, play Kaya. But now we have to keep dealing with the Legion Angel. So Doomscar might be better, but then they can still crew Bangbuster and pressure our Planeswalkers. And don't have the mana for Doomscar and Kaya. 
So I guess we can Teferi plus and then Doomscar. And then Teferi doesn't die to a Bankbuster hit. Although I'm not sure how we'll deal with all the creatures next turn. Yeah, if I go for Kaya now, Exile, Bankbuster, then we, I guess, only lose Kaya or Teferi and not both. So maybe that's still actually the play. And by getting rid of Bankbuster, we deny a card draw and make our Doomscar more effective if they play another Legion Angel. So they might go for Kaya when we have a backup. Seven mana is Holebreaker Horror territory as well, but opponent runs out another Angel. Alright, so now we're at least setting up our Doomscar a little bit better. Kaya down. Spider Queen's nice. And then... I can also think about activating Hall, but I think it's just Doomscar. Plus Spider Queen here. Ooh, wow, Test of Talents. That's unexpected. Yeah, that's gonna get rid of all our Doom Scars. And now we're under a lot more pressure. Opponent gets to see our hand as well. So, four, five, six, seven mana. Still just Spider Queen, and then Chump Chump. Teferi can maybe go digging. Find another Sweeper. Farewell. Yeah, that does it. Or we can grab a Jada's Gift, but I think we need Farewell more. And then Spider Queen would not survive the 1-1 token also attacking. So... Maybe I just go for Kaito, which will uh, protect himself, and then next turn farewell. With the right tools, I can do anything. Do All right, so a couple cards that are making it difficult here: the Angel to Crew Bankbuster, and then now Test of Talents, countering our game plan of wiping the board. So hopefully Farewell can hit, and then our Planeswalkers can keep taking over. But the Fairy will die. You just let me know if you're up for round two. Another Legion Angel, so good to hope there's no second Test of Talents here. Okay. Farewell, and then... Could the fairy first to untap Celestus and a land. Although this doesn't play around Jory Disruption is the main concern. So maybe I should plus first, see if we find an untapped land just to be safe. Although discarding a Planeswalker here also doesn't feel great. Vanishing Verse. Yeah, I think we gotta go for Farewell. Exile Creatures, Graveyards, Enchantments, sure. Alright, that worked. Okay, so we finally get to untap on a somewhat stable board. Legion Angel we can answer in a multitude of ways and our opponents out of additional copies. And our opponent explodes, awesome! So, finally managed to stabilize, and our Planeswalkers able to take over. Alright, so it took a few attempts, but we did get to see a bit of Janna's Gift in action. 
and it certainly offers some very unique play patterns that you otherwise never get to see when it comes to turning your planeswalkers into creatures. So a very fun deck when it all gets going, and overall relatively competitive. Don't expect it to be the number one deck on ladder, but should be able to hold at least a 50% win rate. And then uh, Jada's Gift offers some unique solutions, especially when it comes to pressuring opposing planeswalkers, something that these super friends decks can oftentimes struggle with. So that's pretty nifty. And then the combination of sweepers and planeswalkers can certainly give you a nice matchup against a lot of creature decks in the metagame. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.